And that is one of the wisdoms behind why it is so strongly emphasized in our tradition to stand in the nights and pray. And in these last 10 nights, in this Ramadan in particular, it's important because there's a lot of things going on in the world. There's a lot of things that we need to be making dua for. That when you are standing in these last 10 nights and you are praying to your Lord, and do not forget to pray to your Lord and make dua for the people who are suffering in various places around the world. For the people in Palestine, in Gaza, who are being oppressed and, and attacked and, and destroyed in every way possible for the humanitarian difficulties that they are facing. That make dua for the people who, who have no records, who have no means of helping themselves, who are cut off from humanitarian supplies, from people who, who have to watch their own children die before them. Make dua for the people in, in China where in one of the provinces the government banned fasting itself because the government it does not really like Islam. Right? And to imagine that these people have to, are literally being forced in some instances to eat or you know or have to fast in secret. Make dua for the people in Syria who are in refugee camps and who are who are facing the consequences of a civil war. Make dua for the people in Sudan and for the people in various places of the world where there have been wars and conflicts over the past decade and people who are relocated and don't have a home to live in. But when you are standing in these last 10 nights of Ramadan, make dua for the people of Burma, our brothers and sisters in Burma who are who, who have no means of, of records, who are attacked by the government and are sort of moved around here and there have no place to live in a humanitarian situation that the world kind of doesn't really pay attention to. That at the very least we can make dua for these people. Make dua for the people in our country who are homeless, Muslim and non-Muslim, for the people who don't have a job, for the people who are struggling in various ways. Make dua for the people who are not necessarily in tune with their Islam and who are not attending the masjid, who are not really praying, who are sort of disenfranchised, disillusioned by whatever struggle that they have faced. Make dua that Allah make things easy for them. Make dua that Allah forgives us all for our sins and, and increases us in our iman. And it's important because we need to move beyond what we have right now. We need to look at ourselves as a community and ask how did we get to a place where we don't really have much of an impact on things that go on around us? That how do we get to a place where we watch as these things are going on around in the world and we are essentially powerless to do anything about it, that we have no say in these things? That how do we get to a place when we're constantly responding to crises, constantly responding to problems, rather than taking them on before they come. That how do we come to a place where a recent poll came, a recent study came out that revealed that Muslims are among the least popular group in the in the country. They're Muslims, we are actually less popular even than atheists in terms of how we are perceived. Then how do we get to a place where we're not really, you know, approaching the problems, we're not really dealing with the big problems that we have to deal with as a community? And as individuals, it's essential for us to do everything we can, to do everything that I can to help my community be doing more things, to move away from a model where we're responding to crises, we're constantly, you know, trying to fix things as they come along, and rather as a community that we should have a plan and focus on things in the long term. Right? That we need to start thinking about how we as a community, not just in this in this masjid or in this state, but nationally, 
in general, how we can all come together and do things that are that are more meaningful. That we have to recognize that that when we don't take initiative, that when we don't take initiative and help out in the masjid in whatever ways we can and and make programs for the people who need them, that that we're responsible for what happens. Right. And there are people in the community who have needs that are not being met. Right? And we have to address that. that. There are people, for example, people who convert to Islam who don't necessarily have resources for what they're supposed to do after that. For how they're supposed to do it, how their family may be treating them, or whatever, or they don't have a way of being acclimated to, to the new community. Right? That there are, you know, there are sisters who don't really have, you know, who go through various forms of abuse and they don't really have any resource for where to turn to. They can either turn to, you know, traditional means of therapy, but they don't necessarily, you know, approach the issues that they face in a way that is necessarily Islamically, uh, you know, appropriate, right? That we don't have resources for people who are suffering, who are struggling economically who are struggling with their jobs and whatnot, right? And we need to move beyond a model where we're focusing on, you know, simply expanding the masjid, simply, uh, you know, building things. And we need to think about what resources, what, what programs our community needs. And we need to make a long-term plan. And that comes from people taking initiative individually. It comes from me asking individually, what can I do for my community? Right. Can I maybe, maybe I have the ability to start some sort of community service initiative. And outreach is something that we need to do in our community. That we need to be reaching out to other, you know, religious communities, churches, whatnot, to other, uh, you know, community centers. And we need to be be, be having a sort of dialogue with them in the sense that we need to we need to be we, we need to be uh, we need to be promote we need to be spreading Islam right? we, we need to be we need, we need to stop focusing on just ourselves and we need to think about how we can help people in our communities through community service. to recognize that each and every single person in this room has a responsibility for many different things. We have a responsibility for our brothers and sisters. Whether it simply be saying salam to them, whether it simply be, you know, inviting them for iftar or coming to their home for iftar, whether it simply be spending some time with them, we have a responsibility for our brothers and sisters. We have a responsibility to our masjid in attending it. That we should strive to attend the Jamaat prayer more frequently. That we should strive to, to grow the masjid and help it, help it in expanding in whatever way it we can. We have a responsibility towards our environment in the sense that we need to be cognizant of how we are wasting things and how we are conserving the environment. So we cannot simply, you know, throw our trash away uh, recklessly, but we have to, in a sense, we have to recycle. Uh, we also have to not be reckless in how we use energy, right? Because when we do things like that, we're destroying our environment, right? And the Quran speaks in many verses about how important it is, how the majesty of, of the creation of Right? The skies and the earth and the heavens and all these things were created as a sign for us. It's important that we be aware of, aware of, it's important that we not destroy these things, right? That we conserve them. We need to move as individuals, 
we all need to participate more strongly in our muscular communities. Right? We need to move beyond a place where we're relying on a few people to do everything in the muscular. And we need to move to a place where I ask myself, what can I do, little or small? That what initiative can I take that would help the masjid, that would be beneficial for some people in our community. Maybe I can teach some people the Quran. Maybe I can tutor some kids in whatever subject they're having difficulty with. Maybe I can help with an after-school sports program. Right? Maybe I can help with this or that. Every single person has their own capacity, has their own thing that they're able to contribute. And I need to ask myself that, what am I doing to be a part of that? But rather than, you know, just passively taking in what's being given, passively attending prayers and jumpa and whatnot, I need to be trying to reach out and 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 kind of, you know, take initiative in helping out whatever projects are happening. important because I have a responsibility to these things, right? And I'm going to be asked about it by Allah on the Day of Judgment if I fulfill my responsibility, right? In a broader sense, right, we have to think about how we have a responsibility for what's going on around the world. Because as, as citizens of this nation, we all have a say in this policy, or at least we can have a say if we organize around it. And as we see what's been going on in Gaza for the past few weeks, and you know, in reality what's been going on for the past few decades, we have a say in what happens in our government. And we need to be exercising, we need to be organizing around that, and saying that, hey, we don't like this. You know, we don't like that our government is supporting these policies, and you know, we want this to change. And that hasn't really been happening in the past. Right? Um, in, I think last week, or maybe before that, the White House organized an iftar, right? And they invited some Muslim leaders to come and, you know, okay, it's an iftar, right? And one of the people at the iftar basically asked uh, Obama, uh, you know, why do you, why, why are you doing, like, why are you allowing, uh, you know, why are you allowing Israel to be doing these sort of humanitarian uh, violations, why are you not doing anything about it, why are you not even saying anything about it, right? why, like, why are you, you know, helping them uh, in these policies? And Obama said to the guy, why don't your people organize around these issues and make their voices heard? And, you know, it's true in a sense that the way things, the way policy works in this, in this nation is that it's based around whatever voices are heard, right? So if there aren't being voices heard in the government that people want this to stop, that we don't want, you know, this sort of policy in the Middle East, that we want a, po a policy that is more cognizant of the humanitarian needs, that is more ethical, right? That we don't want to support what's going on over there, then we need to organize around that, right? And that comes from us being disciplined and sort of moving beyond where we are right now, right? It comes from us moving beyond arguing over little things, right? And taking and doing things like writing op-eds in journals that we are able to, right? You know, promote, like spreading awareness of these issues as much as we are able to, right? So as we're standing, and we are now in the last 10 nights of Ramadan, important for us to stand in these nights and reflect on what's going on around us. And it's important because, at, because in the daytime, we need to be focusing on how we are doing work, you know, that is pleasing to Allah, that is helping the community in the masjid. That we do ibadah at night, but we need to be taking initiative and, and building up our community during the day.
And a lot of the people who go to Islamic schools, they don't have that much money or the ability to afford these things, right? So one of the ways that you can spend your zakat is by 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 giving money to, to as a as a scholarship, right? To help someone else pay for their tuition, right? This is something that we need to think about, that I need to think about, and and, and think about how I can, why, why am I not doing more than I currently am to help this budget expand, to help our community in general expand, and whatever I can to serve Allah. And in these last 10 nights of Ramadan, as I am standing in the nights and reflecting and praying to Allah, and asking Him for forgiveness, and asking Him to have mercy on people around the world who are suffering in our own communities, inherent in that is a call to action for me as an individual. To think about what can I do to better my community, right? To not be cynical and say that whatever I do, whatever little thing I do is going to come to nothing. Because that's not how our tradition is. We do not have a cynical tradition. Right? Allah says in the Quran that even Adam's weight of, of good deed will be seen on, on the day of resurrection. And an Adam's weight of bad deeds will be seen on the day of resurrection. Right? The Prophet وسلم, was not a man who was, who was cynical. He was not a man who gave up. At right? every stage of his life, he was faced with challenges. And he, 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 he faced those challenges. And he overcame them. Right? It's something to be important of. Because many times we see what's going on in the world, in our own communities, we salute at ourselves and we say, oh, I'm not really able to do anything. You know, look at my faults. But that's not really how I should be approaching it. I should be thinking, what has Allah given me? What, what resources and abilities that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given me? And how can I use those resources to help the people around me to serve Allah? Right? Allah says in Tawdul Antabut, أَحَسِبَ النَّاسُ أَيْ يُتْرَكُوا أَيْ يَقُولُوا آمَنَّا وَهُمْ لَا يُفْتَنُونَ These mankind think that they will be left alone and because they said, I believe that I have Iman and that they will not be tested. Indeed, if you look around what's going on around us in the world, what's going on in our lives, what's going on at every single level of where you look is a test. And we're not going to be able to overcome these tests if every single person here, every single person does not put in their effort to help our communities be more dynamic. Right? It's not enough for us to trust that other people will do things for us. Other people will take the initiative to fulfill the needs and rights of people who are not being fulfilled. It's not enough. But I have to think about what I can do, you know, first, rather than relying on other people to do it. So, as a final reminder, please make dua for, you know, for these last two nights, and please try to stand in these nights as much as possible, because they are the most important and the most important nights in the entire year in terms of our Ibadah. Allahumma sallallahu alayhi wa sallam ala Muhammad wa ala 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 ala Muhammad O oh Allah, please accept our fasting in this month of Ramadan. O oh Allah, please accept our prayers in this month of Ramadan. O oh Allah, please accept our standing in the nights in this month of Ramadan. O oh Allah, we have done this only for your sake and to seek your pleasure, so please accept it from us. O oh Allah, please accept our prayers to you in the latest nights of Ramadan. O oh Allah, please accept our prayers to you in the late nights of Ramadan. O oh Allah, when we stand up to you and pray to you and ask you for the things that we desire the most, Please accept them from us. O oh Allah, please do not let us withhold any of the desires that we may be having. Let us ask for everything that we may desire for ourselves, for our families, for our communities, for the people around us. Please accept our du'as. O oh Allah, you are the one who accepts the du'a of the suffering. You are the one who accepts the du'a of the one who is fasting. You are the one who accepts the du'a of the one who is oppressed. Please, in these times, please accept our du'as. We are the ones who are fasting. O oh Allah, please accept the prayers of the people around the world who are oppressed. O oh Allah, please deliver them from their hardship. O oh Allah, 
He did not create any of this as a jest. And everything that happens in this world is happening, is happening because you have written it to be so. And a great wisdom. Oh Allah, please allow us to bear your wisdom. Oh Allah, please give us the strength. Please give the people in our communities who are homeless, who do not have food to eat, who are going through various hardships emotionally, physically, economically. Please give them ease in their hearts. Oh Allah, please help the people in Syria and deliver them from their hearts. Oh Allah, please help our brothers and sisters in Gaza and deliver them from their hearts. Oh Allah, please help give ease to the mothers who have to see their children die. Oh Allah, give ease to the families who have been affected by these hardships. Oh Allah, please deliver the people, our brothers and sisters in Burma from their hardship. Brothers and sisters who do not have a place to live, who are oppressed and who are ignored by the world, please accept their prayers and please hear their voices. O oh Allah, give us as individuals and as a community the strength to do more things to serve you, the strength to take a more active role in our government, to take a more active role in our communities. O oh Allah, allow us to be communities that are worthy of being your servants. O oh Allah, make us worthy of being your servants. O oh Allah, make us worthy of being your servants. O oh Allah, please guide us and protect us all.
quick announcements the first one. Salat al Hajj. Uh, tonight will be the first night to pass the nights of Ramadan. We will not be doing Salat al Hajj here. We will be joining Masjid al Brahim. Sheikh Hisham will be there as well as I and we hope to see everyone else there. Uh, second one, uh, we will have uh, community iftar here on Thursday. We will have a fundraiser. We will be here on this premises. Uh, please join us, inshallah. Um, we will also have the uh, Hatim Quran here on the 27th night, inshallah, from Allah. Eid prayer, Eid Salah. We will have Eid Salah here for those who do not make it to Chase Center. Uh, we will also have the Eid Festival over here. That being said, we will need volunteers for both the community iftar that we will have on Thursday for the fundraiser, and we also need volunteers for uh, the Eid Festival. There is a... Uh, and uh, Brother Walid wants four volunteers uh, immediately after Salah, if anybody can help him. This is a Ramadan, please uh, take advantage of uh, getting the edge of the reward. Uh, there's a, a sign-up sheet in, in outside in the hallway. If you would like to volunteer, please put your name and phone number and we'll get in contact with you, inshallah. Uh, what is that?